In the name of God, hello dear students. Welcome to Ferhua's website. My name is Masood. I'm a physics teacher. We are in Ferhua's website here to explain physics curriculum for you. Uh, grade 11. Also, we have an application by this name. You can download it on Play Store of your cell phone to get, uh, uh, let's say, our videos. Uh, right now in uh, let's say this video, I'm going to explain the uh, physics curriculum, grade 11. Before I start the, uh, the first chapter, actual chapter 1, I'm going to tell you about the, the entire curriculum uh, of grade 11. Actually, this textbook, your textbook is divided into two parts, into two areas of physics. From chapter 1 to chapter 5, uh, belong to, uh, belong to uh, actually mechanic. You know the area, you got the area of physics in grade 10. Uh, this uh, textbook, uh, actually textbook grade 11, focuses only on two areas. I told you, from chapter 1 to chapter 5, uh, is all about the mechanic. Right? It's all about the cl classical mechanics. And after uh, chapter 5, I mean chapter 6, 7, and 8, uh, are dedicated for electricity. That's why this textbook is easier than grade 11, than grade, than grade 10. So grade 11 is easier uh, than grade 10 because uh, grade 10 actually uh, concentrated on uh, several areas of physics but here in this textbook grade 11 actually your textbook focuses only on two uh, branches of physics uh, which are mechanics and electricity that's why uh, you can dive in with uh, let's say with mechanics for chapter 1 to chapter 5 that's why the uh, let's say chapter by chapter uh, let's say the the subject is getting easier for you because you dive in with the uh, with the lecture, right? You don't uh, actually you don't read it. Uh, let's say generally you read it. Uh, let's say uh, professionally, you dive in with the subject. That's why you get a lot of information and uh, a lot of secrets are revealed for you during the. Uh, during these chapters and for electricity as well from chapter 6 uh, actually to chapter 8 uh, actually is about the electricity and uh, that's why this textbook uh, actually and a lot of the students it's not my speech a lot of the students bear witness that the, that this textbook textbook grade 11 is easier than grade 10 so uh, our goal in this website, in Ferhua's website, is to make the physics easy for you as much as possible. And uh, we are here to, uh, to do this, right? Uh, right now, I'm going to uh, show you the chapter one, the contents of chapter one. Actually, firstly, by the name of Allah, we start our chapter, chapter one. The title of chapter one is motion in one dimension or dimension, motion in one dimension or dimension, it doesn't matter. How do you pronounce it actually? Contents of the chapter, right? Contents of the chapter, this chapter involves three, three sections. The first section, section one, one, displacement and velocity. Second section, section one, two, acceleration. And section one, three is is about falling objects, right? Uh, so section one one. Let's start with section one one. The first title. The title of the section is displacement and velocity. But the first subject that I'm I'm gonna explain for is motion. So what is motion? Uh, let me read the definition of motion, and I'll explain it for you after that. Motion means the change in position of a of a moving object from the starting from the starting point to the final point. 
So simply we can say motion is a change in position from the starting point to the end, end point or ending point of E of the uh, of the ob uh, let's, let's say uh, of the object, right? And the uh, motion uh, actually is associated with any creature. Think about yourself, for example, whenever you shake your hand, right? Whenever you shake hand with someone, with your friend, you use motion, you use movement of uh, your hand, right? Whenever you blink your eyes, right? Whenever you blink your eyes, uh, you actually, you move your eye, eye lashes, right? You move your, your eye, uh, uh, eyelids actually, or eyelids or eyelashes. Whenever you say hi to someone, it means you, uh, you, you move your hands, right? You move your uh, fingers or your hands, and uh, and we cannot separate the motion from any creature, uh, even if the creature is uh, actually uh, is not organism. For let's say dead bodies, for dead objects, actually in physics there is no. Uh, let's say there's uh, there's no motionless object in the universe based on physics thinking uh, everything is in motion even uh, even if you think about the stone in whenever you put the microscope on the stone you see that the particles of this stone actually is in continuous motion particles are in continuous motion it means uh, there is no motion, motionless object in the universe. Everything is in motion. Everything. Uh, but based on the biology, actually, biology says, for example, a stone is, uh, let's say, it's not organism because it doesn't breathe. But human being uh, is, a, uh, is an organism because it's a living thing, uh, because a uh, uh, human can breathe. And a stone is non-living things, non-living thing because it doesn't breathe. But we don't have this criteria here. We don't have this uh, actually measurement here. Our measurement for naming the object actually is uh, motion, yeah, movement, movement of the particles. Even uh, if you have you bring a stone, right? Everything in physics in motion, and motion. Uh, actually, in other words, uh, anything is in motion means uh, this object has a kind of life, right? Anything that moves, it means it's it's not uh, non-living things. It's uh, it's living things in physics. I I I say I'm talking about physics, not biology. So based on physics uh, thinking, uh, let's say there is no non-living thing. Everything is living thing because uh, they have a kind of motion, they have a kind of life. Motion means, uh, let's say, life, right? So, uh, I told you motion means change in position of object from starting point to the final point. One dimensional motion, I'm going to explain one dimensional motion for you. The simplest type of motion in which an object can move along a straight line. The simplest type of motion in which an object can move along a straight line. So this is the simplest type of motion. One dimensional motion means the simplest type of motion. And the object only moves in a straight line. Right. And uh, in previous year, I explained it for you. Uh, one dimensional motion means, uh, one dimension means, or one dimension means, uh, let's say a straight line motion on, on a straight line like this for example this line is one dimension one dimensional right uh, this one is this square or this uh, shape is uh, let's say two two dimensional object and the cube right this cube is 
three-dimensional motion, a three-dimensional object or three three D. This is a three D object or three dimensional object. This one two D, and this one one dimensional object. So a straight line means like one dimension. Two dimension means uh, let's say anything that has an area that has an area is called a two dimensional object. And any object that has a volume, any object with thickness uh, is a three D object like a human being. We are uh, three dimensional creatures because uh, they have thickness because we have thickness. And uh, in addition to these uh, dimensions, it's not uh, used for our subject. It's general information. I'm going to tell you this information. And the point is zero dimension. Point. Right? This dot or this point is considered zero dimension. It doesn't have any uh, dimension. Uh, that's why this is the uh, classification of dimension of the objects in general. But right now, uh, we are going to explain, we focus on only one dimensional, uh, let's say one dimensional motion or one dimensional, uh, one dimensional motion, right? We study the motion along a straight line. Whether this straight line is the uh, actually highway or, uh, or, this, uh, uh, or this straight line is, is a rails of rails of train or a trunk of a tree right anything uh, actually with one dimension any path with one dimension is considered uh, let's say as one dimensional uh, motion right so one dimensional motion i told you simplest type of motion along a straight line right Examples of one, one dimension. The first example, a commuter train, commuter train moving forward and backward. This train actually is called commuter train because it moves back and forth. It moves, uh, let's say, forward on one way actually, on the opposite way, uh, whenever the, let's say, the train uh, turns back to the original position so uh, it changes the the line and uh, it moves backward so commuter train means any train that moves back and forth it moves back and forth only in one dimension uh, let's say uh, forward and backward forward and backward so on a straight line to the right for example or forward let's say i don't say to the right forward backward that's it. This is called commuter train. Uh, so this train does not turn. This train does not, uh, let's say, deflect to the right. It doesn't deviate to the left. Uh, and uh, it doesn't spin. It doesn't rotate. Only, uh, let's say, if trace out a straight line. This is called commuter train. And it's uh, one example of one dimensional motion. Uh, regarding the one-dimensional motion, we have another example. Uh, example of gecko climbing a tree. We have a trunk of a tree, right? And this gecko starts its motion, its one-dimensional motion from this position. Uh, right? Let me change the color of the marker. Uh, the gecko changed its position from, for example, point A to point B. Right, so motion means change in position of an object, change in location of an object from a starting point. This is called initial point or starting point, right? Starting point. And uh, this is called, actually this position, final position, is called a final point or final position or end, end point actually, right? So this is another example of one dimensional motion, a gecko climbing a tree. So they are examples of one dimensional motion. I prepared some questions for you. Uh, let's discuss them together. Uh, let's say one by one. So question number one. 
let me read the question number one for you. It says, choose the one dimensional motion among the following motions. We want to choose the one dimensional motion. A, a commuter train moving forward and backward. Right. Is it right? Yes. B, a commuter train moving left and right. I told you the train only follows the path, follows the back and forth path, follows the forward and backward path. It doesn't, I told you, it doesn't uh, deflect to the right. It doesn't move to the left, right? So this one is not accepted. Uh, see, it says a commuter train moving up and down. A commuter train cannot move up and down only. I told you, it moves forward and backward. A, D, it says all of the above. No, only uh, A is true. So let me circle the correct answer a is true a commuter train moving forward and backward question number two choose the one dimensional motion among the following motions so we have the 